Hey guys and welcome to Hada Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about a very interesting virus that has made news headlines around the world, and that is the coronavirus. So let's get started. So what is the coronavirus? Coronaviruses are an incredibly diverse species of virus, which is most commonly found in many animal species, including bats, snakes, and camels. But this large family of viruses only has a few specific types which are known to cause infection in humans. Some of these examples are the novel coronavirus, which began as the outbreak in Wuhan, China, and some other past previous examples, which was the SARS virus or severe acute respiratory syndrome, and also the very common the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus, which was commonly known as MERS. So from this definition of coronavirus, we get that it's actually quite a diverse group of viruses that fall under this one main family. And most of these viruses are actually responsible for infecting animals, but a few of them have actually been known to cause infection in humans. So some of the past examples were the MERS and SARS outbreaks in other parts of the world. And now in December 2019 and early 2020, we see the emergence of a new one, which is called the novel coronavirus or the 2019 novel coronavirus. And this virus is very important and is getting worldwide publicity because it actually affects the upper respiratory system of the patient and the symptoms are very flu-like but it's actually spreading quite fast from one individual to the other so it's becoming sort of a public health catastrophe so now that we know what the coronavirus is let's take a closer look at what causes the coronavirus so as we mentioned in the slide before these types of virus are actually spread between animals and humans and then humans to humans. But the actual source of the December 2019 outbreak in China hasn't been confirmed yet, but is being investigated. So from the previous coronavirus human attacks, such as SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2012, we found that there was an initial spread of the virus from first an animal into the human. And there are various animals that actually carry the coronavirus or get infected by them from time to time. And common ones are camels, bats, snakes, etc., which actually was the initial carrier before it spread to the human host. But even though much further research and investigation is being done, we still aren't sure what actually caused the 2019 December outbreak in Wuhan, China. So as we can see here, it says the Wuhan coronavirus 2020, the cause is still said to be unknown. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of the coronavirus. So the majority of these patients will present with fever, cough, and dyspnea, which is a difficulty in breathing. And other less common symptoms include myalgia, fatigue, butin production, confusion, headache, sore throat, rhinorrhea, chest pain, hemoptysis, which is the coughing up of blood, diarrhea, and nausea and vomiting. And in very severe cases, the virus will also cause pneumonia, SARS, which is the severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and even death. So the main problem with this virus is that besides it's spreading so rapidly, it also causes symptoms which are very unspecific or which actually cause most patients to think they're just having a normal flu or a cold. And from these symptoms, we can actually see that the upper respiratory tract is the most commonly affected part of the body. And most patients are actually presenting with this cough, this difficulty in breathing, and this constant fever. They also have some other symptoms like confusion, tiredness, headaches, etc. And may also suffer from diarrhea and vomiting as well. So the symptoms are actually very unspecific. They're quite sporadic. But the disease is very serious and we have to treat symptoms as fast as we can. Because over time, the disease actually can progress to full-blown pneumonia, SARS, kidney failure, and death. So who is currently affected by this 2019 coronavirus outbreak? So as of the 29th of January 2020, China's National Health Commission have reported 7,711 confirmed cases and 12,167 suspected cases across 31 provinces in China. At least 170 deaths have also been reported. And cases have also been confirmed in the following countries, the United Arab Emirates, Germany, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Canada, Malaysia, Australia, France, Nepal, the United States, Singapore, Vietnam, the Republic of Korea, Japan, and Thailand. So how should one protect themselves against the coronavirus? 
So the first thing we can do is stay away from unwell people and the affected area zones. We can avoid contact with animals, especially bats and camels. We can wash our hands thoroughly using running water and soap or an alcohol-based gel. It's also important to disinfect surfaces thoroughly with bleach, wash your hands after you cough or sneeze and before preparing food, and it's also essential to thoroughly cook meat and eggs. And as we can see from this acronym, it says Wuhan, which means wash hands, use your mask properly, have your temperature checked regularly, avoid large crowds, and never touch your face with unclean hands. So how does one diagnose the coronavirus? So the test that is used to diagnose this disease is called the reverse transcriptase PCR or the RT-PCR test. This test measures the amount of viral RNA, which is a chain of cells that carry the genetic information, from a sample of the patient's sputum, serum, or blood. So because this virus is actually an RNA virus, we can use a polymerase chain reaction test to actually measure little amounts of the viral RNA. And this will give us an idea of whether the patient is positive or negative for the coronavirus. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of the coronavirus. So there's currently no specific antiviral agent that is available for the treatment of this infection, and there's actually no vaccine at the moment. Therefore, the treatment given is purely supportive and includes supplemental oxygen and conservative fluid management as indicated by clinical condition. So the only thing we can do for the patient is put them on ventilation support and also ensure electrolyte and fluid balances by means of an IV line and supplemental fluids. And it is also essential to provide the infected patient with a face mask and place the patient in a closed room to prevent any further spreading of this disease. So the patient isolation is essential in this matter and it's the only way we're actually going to combat this disease is if all the infected patients come into minimal contact with other individuals. It'll decrease the spreading capability rapidly. And that brings us to the end of this video on the coronavirus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure to turn in your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.